Hey everybody, so a little while ago I showed you a set of Lionel Santa Fe Yellow Bonnet F7s and in that video I briefly mentioned the Santa Fe Blue Bonnet paint scheme but I didn't have one around to show you right then but I do now and here it is. So this should be familiar to a lot of you. This came out late last year. It's made by Menards of course. This is their Santa Fe Blue Bonnet F3 set and we're going to check it out right now on Eric's Trains. <laughs> Okay, so like I said, Menards released these in late 2022, and they only made a couple hundred of them. This is one of their beta release F units. This is actually the fourth beta release, I believe. The previous ones have the red war bonnet paint scheme. This has the blue bonnet paint scheme. And the purpose of the beta releases is to get them out there to a few folks who can test them and find out, you know, their weaknesses and flaws and so forth, if they have any. And so they put them on their website and it's first come, first serve. There might be 200 for sale. And once they're gone, they're gone. Now, I'm doing this video now because I was an idiot and I didn't get one of these when they went on sale. I just missed it. And I had to get it after the fact on eBay. And so I ended up paying way too much for this thing. The AA set originally sold for, I believe, $175, which is an amazing price. I think the price was $175. If it's not right, I'll put the right price on the screen. Anyway, they were really cheap, but if you buy one of them on eBay, you're going to pay quite a lot more. I've seen some people trying to sell these things for five or six hundred bucks, which they are definitely not worth. Anyway, so these are pretty nice. You've probably seen other videos of them, but they do have one flaw, apparently. On the non-powered unit, some of them have the wrong capacitor, and if you put it on AC power, which is what we use in O-Gage, it'll cause that capacitor to explode. So when we put this on the track, we'll see if it goes boom. And if it does, I'll show you a fix for it. Anyway, let's go ahead and get these things out of their plastic case and onto the layout. So here's a better view of the box. Train sounds, two powerful motors, working lights. That's in the top unit and the bottom unit has working lights. Remote control, realistic train sounds, compatibility, compatible with Three rail train cars, including Lionel and MTH, negotiates 031 curves or larger. And there's the tag. Santa Fe diesel locomotive powered and non-powered set. Available only at Menards. So I've watched several videos of people reviewing these and I've read a lot of the comments on the forums and so forth. And I always think it's hysterical when people criticize these things so harshly. You know, whenever they have a problem or something doesn't work right, you know, calm down. You know, it'd be different if this cost $800 or if it was Lionel, 1000 or 1200 But it doesn't. It's very affordable. Extremely affordable, as a matter of fact. It's a beta release. They know there's going to be issues. So just relax, calm down, have fun. Menards is a good company. Good people work there. You know, if you have a major issue and you need a refund, I'm sure they'll do it. Some people just take this hobby way too seriously. You know, Menards is one of those things. It's interesting. You know, they are so low on the price spectrum. You know, they've cornered the bottom end of the market and their prices are so darn low that it gets into that territory of where you'll forgive an awful lot because the price is so low. It's like if you went out and bought a car, if you bought a brand new car and they were selling it brand new from the factory for $5,000, you'd probably be willing to forgive a lot more than if you had a problem on a brand new car that cost you $50,000. So this is the non-powered unit. It's very lightweight. I will probably add some weights to this because it is very lightweight. But in terms of the appearance, it looks great. I mean, for a rock bottom priced train, this is great. What more can you ask? Really? Kind of reminds me of like, you know, those cheap MPC era trains that Lionel made, like kind of early 80s Lionel. <laughs> they're, they're low end starter sets. Okay, now the powered unit is much heavier, as you might expect. It's got two motors inside and a soundboard and speaker and all that kind of stuff. I'll get the scale out in a moment and we'll weigh these guys. 
And again, appearance wise, it looks great. There's a little bit of an imperfection in the paint right here, but you know, for the price, who cares? It's fine. For 225 for an AA set like this, you should not be looking for perfection. And if you are looking for perfection at this price, well, I'm sorry to tell you, but you're the one with the problem, not Menards. I think it's really interesting that the powered unit has the heavier metal trucks. And then the non-powered unit has these light as a feather plastic trucks, which of course are going to be very fragile. These will break very easily, so you want to be careful with it. You know, it's a non-powered unit. It's got lighting on board. Its only purpose is to trail the powered unit. And this has a nice weight to it. Metal trucks, much more solidly constructed. So all in all, I'm fine with that. That's okay. And then we've got the remote control. There's Jack the German Shepherd. He is always represented on any train stuff that Menards makes. And here he is on the back of the remote. I think this takes triple A's. Let's find out. Yeah, triple A. So three triple A's. I'm sure there's somebody out there complaining that they don't supply the batteries. <laughs> Got the light. Seems to work. Okay, so the more I look at these two locomotives, the more quality issues I see. I mean, these things are by no means high quality. There are all sorts of paint flaws and overspray all over the place. And, you know, they're just not high quality models, but that's okay. You know, I'm going to keep saying this. High quality is not the goal here. Ultra affordability is the goal. And in that respect, just like all of the other train stuff Menards makes, I think these things succeed. There's a reason that an MTH AA set or a Lionel AA set is much more expensive because in general, the build quality and the materials are much, much better. So while these things are by no means perfect in their physical appearance, I like them. I mean, they're great. They're ultra affordable motive power and Menards really has that segment of the market sewn up for themselves. I mean, no other train maker can even touch Menards prices, nobody. So by now you may have seen these things run in other videos and we will run these at the end of this video but I really want to break these down and see what's going on I want to see what's plastic and what's metal I want to take a look at the inside of each unit I'm probably going to add some weight to the non-powered unit because it's so light and I also want to see if this has the bad capacitor that tends to explode or if they fix that all right so here's our powered unit that switch on the bottom does turn the sounds on and off for the powered unit and on the non-powered unit the same switch turns the lights on and off because the non-powered unit all it has is lighting and when i say non-powered i mean it doesn't have motors so these trucks by the way are an example of cost cutting and how these things are so affordable you've got one pickup roller per truck that is something that used to be the norm on o-gauge diesels maybe 20 years ago nowadays most high-end o-gauge diesels have two rollers per truck, and you generally only see one roller per truck on low-end stuff like this. Okay, so I've got all four screws out. Everything's self-contained. There's nothing connected to the shell. There's the shell interior. It's kind of cute. They've secured everything in place with hot glue. <laughs> I mean, it's charming the way these things are made so affordably. And overall, they look good. It's just when you take a close look, you know, you see little flaws like that, you know, and over spray, you can see there's like yellow and blue kind of in the same area, but at a distance, it looks fine. Okay, so we got two can motors. They're not flywheel motors. Again, a cost cutting measure. And there's our board. There's just some big old capacitors. And you got your bridge rectifier there. It's nicely laid out. I mean, it's not sloppy wiring or anything. And then you've got your cab there with your lights and the two crew figures. And this has a nice weight to it. So let's see what is plastic and what is metal. So these brackets are plastic. The frame is metal. The pilot's metal too. The fuel tank is metal. That's nice. 
And then we've got the trucks. So the truck side frames are metal, the couplers are metal, and the truck itself is metal. Now, here's a real big cost cutting thing. You see how it has plastic gears rather than metal gears? That's a big cost cutting move that I'm not really a fan of because nylon gears will wear down over the years and they won't last as long. But again, at this price point, it's okay. If I saw plastic gears on a Lionel diesel, I'd be really upset. But here, you know, it's kind of expected. I've got all plastic gears in there. So this probably won't run forever. I mean, you know, a Lionel diesel, barring any, you know, board malfunctions or anything, will probably be running in 20 years. This, eh, you know, without some work and stuff, it might not be running in 20 years, but that's okay. And the thing about Menards, the really cool thing is that they're just doing the train thing for fun because their business does not depend on train sales. It's not their bread and butter. Menards is a home improvement, you know, store, sort of like Home Depot, kind of like a mixture of Home Depot and Target, if you ask me. But this is definitely not their bread and butter. They're only doing it for fun because I suspect the owner of Menards is a train fan and decided, hey, I've got this big company. I've got some factories over in Asia. Why don't I make some trains just for the hell of it? And that's what they're doing. And so you really can't fault anything they do here because it's all about fun for them. And that's also another reason why their trains are so gosh darn affordable because their business doesn't hinge on making a profit from these. I would suspect that they're just trying to break even on them. And when all you're trying to do is break even, you can sell them at a much, much lower price. All right, let's check out the non-powered unit. You know, it's different for Lionel and MTH and Atlas. Their livelihood depends on making a profit from the train. So they have to sell them at a higher price. Not so with Menards. It's kind of cool like that. Okay, I gotta be really careful because this has much more plastic on it than the powered unit. Okay, once again, it's all self-contained. Ah, uh, yeah, this is the revision. So the one that had the capacitor that tended to explode, it didn't have a board, it just had a capacitor, a DC capacitor. And because it's AC power, when the AC met with the DC capacitor, it would explode. But now they've got a rectifier to change the AC to DC, and they've got this nice little board to make it a nice clean setup. You can see there's Chinese writing on the board, so this probably just came off the shelf from some factory. 2022-1209, I guess that's December 9th of 2022. AC input, DC output, a couple resistors, and there's that cap. So much more plastic on this thing. Now we still have the crew figures and the lights, which is nice. But boy, the fuel tank is plastic, not metal like it is on the powered unit. The truck side frames are plastic. The pilot is plastic. The couplers are still metal. The roller there is metal. The truck itself, I'm not sure. Let's see if we can find out. Okay, this little piece here that secures the motor to the frame, that's metal. I'm giving him the old tooth test. That's how I usually tell if something's metal if I'm not sure. I tap it with my teeth and you can tell right away if it's plastic or metal. Boy, is that plastic too? I think this middle part on the truck might be plastic. Let's give the old tap test with the screwdriver, so. Yeah, I think that's plastic. And the wheels, I thought those were plastic, but no, they're metal. They kind of have to be metal because that's where it gets the coming from. You can see that wire. They've just got the wire wrapped around the axle. <laughs> Talk about budget cutting. Wow, that's crazy. And yeah, all this stuff is just plastic, plastic, plastic. They've only got one screw per side instead of two. I guess that works. The little ladder here, I think that's metal. Yeah, that's metal. <laughs> And the frame is metal, but wow, so much plastic. And they've got traction tires on here, even though it's a non-powered unit, that's kind of funny. 
I guess they just used the same wheels that the powered unit had. They've still got the insulating thing for the center rail, as if it were metal, but I, I think this is plastic on the non-powered unit. Wow. So the last thing I want to do is add some weights to the non-powered unit, but I want to start off by seeing what these things weigh as is. So the non-powered unit weighs in at one pound, 7.9 ounces. Pretty lightweight. And the powered unit weighs in at three pounds, 7.1 ounces, big difference. Now we're not gonna get this thing to weigh three pounds, seven ounces, but we'll do what we can. So I've got my weight kit over here. If you haven't seen that before, I did a video a while back where I talked about how to add weight to cars. These are weights for tires on cars, automobiles. So I'm gonna put one above each of the trucks. These are one ounce a piece, so this will add two ounces to the weight of this unit. And then I'll put a one ounce piece up here. Hopefully I'll be able to get the shell on with these additions. I'm not worried about these, but the ones that are close to the edge, we'll see what happens. Put one, one back here. It's kind of fun doing this. Okay, so we've added four ounces. Yeah, now it's feeling a little better. <laughs> Still got those plastic trucks, which feel really flimsy, but we're getting better. And we'll put one right here in the middle. I guess we could stack these on top of the trucks, but I'm gonna space these evenly. Okay, that's six ounces. You know what, we'll go for broke. Sure, that can turn. Yeah, okay, that's good. It'd be funny if I add all these weights and then <laughs> the power unit can't pull it. <laughs> okay, so now we've got two, four, six, eight ounces. So we've added half a pound. Yeah, that feels a lot better. One of the problems with this chrome finish is it gets fingerprints all over it. All right, yeah, that feels a lot better. So let's see what the non-powered unit comes in it now. Right at two pounds, yeah, much better. Okay, we've got them both back on the track and boy, in the classic O-gauge tradition, look at that space between the two A units. There's about a mile between them, I love it. Anyway, let's put some power on the track. So as soon as power is applied to the track, you get the prime mover sounds from the powered unit. When I turn on the remote though, it'll get the signal from the remote and take its volume setting, which right now is all the way down. And so now the volume goes off, but I can turn it back up with this wheel. I love the easy volume control on these Menards remotes. Unlike the Lion Chief remotes, you can control the volume on the Lion Chief remote as well. It's just not as intuitive, not as easy. I mean, you can do this without even looking at it just in your hand. And just like with Lion Chief, you've got reverse and forward with the throttle wheel and then horn, crew talk, and bell. So let's check out the horn. It's a pretty good horn, but it does have kind of an abrupt cutoff. It'd be better if it trailed off, but oh well. And here's the bell. bad. And here's the crew talk. And actually, this is where the Menards locomotive has one advantage over Lionel. And that is that it has road number specific dialogue. The air brake test was good. So let's get ready to move. Roger that. We are ready to go. Then let's go. Dispatcher, 3945 East is ready to proceed. The dispatch, I see the signal has gone from red to green. We are moving. Check. The signal is green. Moving from track 5 to track 1. Track 1 lamp is green. Confirm the green. Cars are rolling through smoothly. 
say I'm really impressed with the crew talk sounds on this model not only do they have a lot of sound sequences but like I said it's also road number specific dialogue which is something you don't see with Lionel until you get to the vision line now in terms of lighting it's pretty basic you've got lighted number boards which is nice no cab interior lighting and then you've got a headlight and a tail light and the powered locomotive does have directional lighting so the light will change depending on which direction the locomotive is going the non-powered unit, because it doesn't have any fancy electronics in it, it doesn't know what direction the train is going, and so the lights on both the front and the rear are on at all times. Anyway, that's it. Pretty basic, pretty easy to run, so let's go ahead and take it for a quick spin. Okay, real quick, let me turn the volume down to interject something for a moment. So in between the last scene and now, I tested the locomotive on the way out to make sure it was going to run smoothly and all that. And I tested the pulling power. It came in right at 14 ounces, which is not surprisingly on the low side of things. If this was a Lionel or MTHF unit, it would more likely be around two pounds. But again, you get what you pay for. This is just not going to be a big hauler, and that's the way it is. So I tried pulling 11 cars with it, and it was pulling it, but I could tell the powered unit was struggling a little bit. And so I reduced it to 10 cars, and it was doing better, but not completely happy. So what I did is I opened up the powered unit again, and just like we did with the non-powered unit, I added some weight. I added 8 ounces of weights to bring the total weight up to around 4 pounds. That extra weight will press down on the trucks and give the locomotive a little more torque, at least in theory. So I put it back together and tested the pulling power again, and yes, there was an improvement. Now it's pulling at about 1 pound, 1 ounces, so about 3 ounces of improvement. So I tried pulling 10 cars again, and now it pulls it just fine. Now, I could probably maybe push it up to 12 or 15 cars, but I'm not going to do that. And the reason is because of those plastic gears I talked about earlier. You don't want to push those things because if you overload this locomotive, it's possible you might damage those plastic gears and ruin the locomotive. So I would recommend keeping this thing to 10 cars or less. And you know, if you want to try 12, 15, you can, but just understand you might damage the locomotive and you're certainly not going to be able to pull 15, 20, 30 cars with this thing. It's just not that kind of model. But do keep in mind that I'm pulling heavy O scale cars. Depending on the type of cars you're pulling, you might be able to pull more or less. You know, if you're using semi scale freight cars like the ones that Menard sells, well, you might be able to pull 12, 15 of those with no issue, but with these heavier O-scale cars, I'm keeping it to 10 or less. Anyway, let's take it for a spin.
All right, so there you have it. The Menard Santa Fe Blue Bonnet F3AA set. What do I think of this set? Well, as I've been saying the whole time, you get what you pay for. Do I think this is a high quality model? No. Uh, do I think it's going to be running for the next 50 years? Probably not. Do I think it is dirt cheap affordable? Yes. And that is what this thing is all about. Getting an O-Gage train in the hands of someone who is on a tight budget. And in that respect, as I said before, it succeeds. I'm not really sure what improvements Menards can make on this without increasing the price. If I could talk to the folks at Menards and suggest two improvements to this set, it would be number one, replace those plastic gears with metal gears. And number two, I would work on the remote throttle. I found the throttle control kind of finicky and you sort of had to really work at it to get it to go the speed you wanted and especially to get it to sit idle. And so that could use some improvement as well. And anyway, that's all I have to say on it. Let me know what you think in the comments below. For now, that's it. I'm Eric Siegel. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.